Hi, Bill Palm here again, and uh, this is clip number two in the demonstration, Seagulls and Surf in Sunset Bay. It's quite a title. I have to work a little bit to remember that. Okay, oh, what I want to start with today is a little follow-up, a little review of what I did last time, and a little further explanation. I'm going to have to do that from time to time because I'm operating a limited time and I just can't remember to do everything. So I have a little cheat sheet here with some notes to remind me of what I want to cover. Okay, down here. Now, notice here, is that clear? Crystal clear? Okay. Um, that from yesterday, the, this got a little lighter in here that I painted. That's because watercolor does that. For those of you that don't know that, watercolor does get lighter as it dries. The darker the colors you use, the more they will lighten up as they dry. The, and with light colors, it may be fairly faint and hard to notice. This is fairly faint and somewhat hard to notice, but it did lighten somewhat. You notice that the little rain effect here kind of went away. I like to paint light to dark. I do that with virtually everything I do when I'm depicting a scene, whether it's a little bitty value sketch. Okay, back up here. Whether it's a little bitty value sketch, or a sketch on scene, or even a really tiny little value sketch to get a feel for the scene, I work from light, and then I gradually build up till I get to the darkest darks. Now, what we did here, back down again, in the sky is called wet and wet, for those of you who are unfamiliar with that term. That means that I wet the paper ahead of time, and then I put wet paint on that wet paper and you can get these nice fuzzy effects which are beautiful for clouds. You notice that I did this entire sky in two or three minutes max. Very easy. Very hard to do a good sky or much more challenging in oils or acrylics used like oils. Very easy in watercolor. There are things that are hard in watercolor and hard in oils and easy in watercolor. Easy in oils. But this is one that's easy in watercolor. Now, back up to me. When you are doing uh, wet and wet, uh, here's a good thing to remember. The more you want your shapes to stay the shapes that you put them on paper and not blur out and get fuzzy, the thicker you need your paint to be. Now, some people tell you that the time to paint on wet paper is when the shine leaves the paper. You look at it and you can see it looks dull, it's no longer shiny like there's water on the surface. But to me, I need to start usually a little ahead of that because if you wait till that point, you have to move like lightning very fast or you can run into trouble. You have like at the most like a minute or so before you're going to start, it's going to start drying too much and you're going to get hard edges. So one way of doing that is this. Now when I painted yesterday, by the way, um, there was a little bit of shine left on the paper. And you remember that I went in and wet it one more time just to make sure I had enough wet on it before I started. And I can get away with that because I use a trick that Tony Couch teaches, one of, one of the best ones I've learned in this particular area of skill. You, when you get your paint on your brush, usually the water spreads throughout the entire brush very quickly. That means there's going to be more water down here than there is paint down here means right next to the middle part, the ferrule. The paint tends to be more in the tip and that's the best place for you to have it for various reasons that we'll get into in, in later parts of this demonstration. So to take part of the water out without taking very much of the paint out, what you do is you take a damp sponge, touch the brush here for a second or two or three to draw a lot of the water out of the bottom of that brush right here, the bottom of the hairs leaving more paint in the tip. That makes it thicker. So when you put it on and paint it on, that's okay, that's okay. It tends to stay where you put it more and, and not blur and get fuzzy and run all over the place. Obviously, you don't want so much water on the paper that it starts running down because when you put paint on there, it's going to run down too. Mine actually did a little bit, but I made up for that by blotting it up quickly with a either a tissue or a paper towel. Okay, that's one trick. Okay, so now um, I find once again light to dark is the best way to go most of the time. There's times when you will want to paint dark to light. Occasionally, to me, it's rather rare.
and most of the time light to dark because you cannot cover up dark uh, with light but you can cover up light with dark so if you make a mistake you can cover it up now uh, let's get going today I'm going to work on the cliff area because it's, it's dried overnight it's nice and solid dry I don't have to worry about that this time I'm going to want mainly hard edges at the top and the bottom if I remember I'll probably soften a few edges to make everything blend in better now there's still some paint here from last night um, the blue and I'm going to use that to my advantage so I'm going to start doing the cliffs the technique I'm going to use on the cliffs is called uh, color variety by a lot of artists it's also called mixing your paint on the paper what I'm aiming for is the initial wash I'll come back a couple more times after it's dried thoroughly initial wash of beautiful color color variety color that mingles with other colors and gives you a variety of color all the way across this cliff area and I'll talk to you while I'm doing it so I'm gonna let's start out and notice I need it uh, can you see the palette here fairly well mm -hmm. okay I need to spray these so that I get them all nice and wet and I can grab anything I want at any time I'm gonna focus on basically six pigments two blues a yellow two reds maybe a second red maybe not uh, burnt sienna and sap green. The sap green I include so I get a nice variety in my greens. I have more to work with than just two blues and a yellow with touches of red. So how much time are we on? I've done six minutes? Okay, thank you. Sorry. Almost seven. Almost seven. Wow. Okay. So here we go. Let's make some burnt sienna. I'm going to start off with pure burnt sienna. And I want it fairly wet wet so that it mingles easily with the paint that I'm going to put onto it. So this is pure burnt sienna. I'm going to come in here at the edge of clip. Now you need to zoom down like I told you. Mm -hmm. I'm to come into the edge of the cliffs here. Notice that the top is a hard edge. Very nicely defined. I'll paint like that. I'm using a one and a half inch flat brush. The one with Steve Quiller's signature on it, very nice, uh, made by made by Richardson Professionals. Okay, now uh, into that, I'm going to put a little blue while it's still wet. And this is drying very fast today. It's a dry time here in Oregon. I'll pull out a little lizard and crimson. crimson. While it's still wet. I'm going to come around and form my cliff edge like that. Notice when I do this, I want to do it very wet and and this color here is a little yellow with a little dirty color mixed in to give me a good variety. I'm coming across here like that. At this point I'm going to come in with a little more burnt sienna. I'm trying to vary these. I need to remember to vary these, the distances between when I put the color in. You notice that I'm painting top to bottom. This is called using the brush to form the form. In other words, the strokes that I make <clears throat> show what kind of form I'm painting as well as some of the texture on the form. That is a good way to go. Okay, let's see. Oh, a little ultramarine blue. Now this is just the initial wash. As a matter of fact, let's go back here. I messed up a bit. I meant to go up to that higher line there. I need those cliffs a little thicker. So let's go back into this. Still wet. When it's wet you can get away with so much in watercolor. I want to come over here because we're going to have some white foam of the waves crashing right there. Okay, I'm going to come back in here now with other colors. I want to come back to some rather pure burnt sienna. Each time I make a stroke when I come back into it I paint a little bit into the edge of the wet paint from my previous stroke. Now I'm going to paint right over these rocks here because they're going to be very dark when I get there. <clears throat> 